We turn to our top story in a city in crisis. There is fear and frustration in Fells Point after a double shooting early this morning. Mobile phone video shows medics surrounding at least one of the victims. Police say they were called to the scene around 1 o'clock this morning. A man was shot in the head and he is fighting for his life. A woman was shot in the arm. We have team coverage tonight of the crime crisis. Fox 45's Mackenzie Frost is demanding answers from city leaders, especially after six people were shot in Baltimore today. First, Jeff Abel is live with the concerns in Fells Point. Jeff. Well, no one can quite explain it, but once again, gunfire has rocked the community of Fells Point, and tonight, one man is fighting for his life. In the heart of Fells Point today, there were signs of a very violent time. Shattered glass, damaged doors, and nearby okay. sat four diners who had never been to Baltimore before. Definitely wasn't expecting it to kind of be in the center of the city. It was just after midnight when bullets started flying on this block of South Broadway. When officers arrived, they found a man shot in the head and a 35-year-old woman shot in the arm. And the suspects were long gone. They all fled south on Broadway for Spain. So far, there's no arrest and no motive for the shooting. But the incident is the latest in a string of attacks in this community. Three months ago, 30-year-old Marco Nunez was gunned down while leaving a bar a block away. A 16-year-old is now accused of his murder. Now everybody is a little bitter and angry. They come out to have a good time, but they carry their problems with them wherever they go. We need to be outraged. Fells Point realtor Claudia Tolls believes the city is growing accustomed to the violence and fears city leaders are doing little to stop it. These kinds of incidents are being normalized because of their silence, because of their lack of outrage, because of their lack of action. For now, one victim is fighting for his life as this community fights to understand why. I'm going to keep everybody in prayer, and I hope everything work out. All of this is happening just as the Fells Point Festival prepares to launch this weekend. Tonight, police are telling us they, pre they are preparing to assign additional officers to ensure everyone is safe. We're live tonight, Jeff Abel, Fox 45 News. Well, Jeff just mentioned Marco Nunez. He was a bouncer at Rodos and one of six people shot in Fells Point this year. That neighborhood has also seen rowdy crowds. Back in May, a party crowd trashed the area and a fight broke out inside a convenience store while looters ransacked the shelves. And the violence this year is bringing to mind the chaos in Fells Point last summer when massive fights broke out in the square. People were photographed standing on police cars as officers stood by. There were also a number of shootings there. And the neighborhood has also seen problems with dirt bikes. Video from last summer shows riders tearing through the crowded and small streets there. As we mentioned, at least six people were shot in Baltimore today. Just after midnight, three women and one man were hurt in a quadruple shooting in northeast Baltimore. Violence was on the tops of the minds of members of city council during a public safety hearing that had Baltimore police on the hot seat. Fox 45's Mackenzie Frost is demanding answers about what's being done to curb crime. Most of the members want to know what's being done about guns and what's standing in the way from the Baltimore Police Department getting a grip on this violence. The agency says a lot of it comes down to staffing. The violence happening in the streets of Baltimore. Good afternoon. The topic inside City Hall. Homicides and shootings hurt the victims who are injured and the families who are killed or injured. Deputy uh, Commissioner Richard Worley Governor fielding Jones. questions, especially about the highly demanded summer crime plan. Do we think it was successful? Our numbers were up slightly, but that doesn't mean it wasn't a success. Worley notes major events in the city this summer went smoothly, but the issue of staffing resurfacing time and time again. As the violence continues, more questions about what can be done to stop the trigger pullers before they commit a crime. What we're doing about guns. BPD says it's working closely with federal partners to track guns in the city. While somewhat touting homicides being one less than this time last year, Worley recognizing it's not good enough. Because it's still 254 lives and 254 more 
um, citizens that we lost. This hearing comes just months after some of the same council members stood in City Hall. People are calling our offices crying out. Demanding BPD to step up and do more, calling the violence unacceptable. We need foot patrol in these areas. As 2022 continues to be on pace to surpass 300 homicides for the eighth straight year, we sent questions to Mayor Brandon Scott asking, would you consider BPD's summer deployment strategy a success? What is your plan for reducing violent crime moving forward? We saw some members of the city council call for more help before the summer started. Why does it take members of the city council to demand more and not you? In a lengthy response, the mayor's office says Mayor Scott has been vocal in working with everyone to curb violence, adding, quote, to insinuate that any person or group is more interested in the public safety and well-being of Baltimoreans is erroneous and simply misguided. The statement does not say whether Mayor Scott viewed the summer crime plan as a success. Meanwhile, should those demands have come from the mayor? Um, of course they should have come from the mayor. I, I will say, though, um, it's hard to say whether or not that conversation has been had um, already. Would you describe the summer deployment strategy as a success? Uh, I can't say that for my hearing today. Um, I, you know, I think there are parts of it based on our conversation that seem like they were successful. Mm -hmm. um, but I say by, by and large across the city, we're not seeing the returns that we want to see. BPD often touting the work being done to drive down organized crime, but the efforts from the city right now only focused in the Western Police District. Other people are waiting. Hey, wh when is it my turn to see this? Um, this isn't like giving out Christmas gifts. I want my, my gift, my Christmas gift. When will everyone get their gift of a perfectly safe neighborhood? I can't say. Um, I would for that to happen yesterday. Conway says despite cooler temperatures on the horizon, there should be a crime plan in place for the rest of the year as well. Some of the council members also pressed BPD about what's being done to work with the presumptive next state's attorney, Ivan Bates, to make sure there is clear communication and an understanding top to bottom about future prosecution policies. In City Hall, Mackenzie Frost, Fox 45 News. Well, we want to hear from you. Who do you trust to deal with crime in Baltimore? The city council, the mayor, both or neither? So far, 96% of you who voted responded by saying neither. Head to foxbaltimore.com slash vote and click on the Pulse tab to weigh in. Johns Hopkins University's forum on launching an independent police department is going virtual tomorrow. It follows this scene last week when protesters took over the stage and shut down the meeting. Hopkins temporarily shelved the idea of forming its own police force in 2020 in the wake of George Floyd protests, but it is now moving forward with that idea. We will follow tomorrow's virtual meeting and have a full report.